Jennifer May Ryland is a painter who has shown her work internationally. In 2022, she released the Diana Tarot, a full tarot deck directly inspired by the life of the late Diana, Princess of Wales. Each card features Jennifer's original watercolor paintings depicting the events from the life of Princess Diana. The Diana Tarot deck has been covered by Vice News. I'm talking with Jennifer today on Third Eye Sight. My name is Juan Francisco, and I'm a psychic medium and tarot card reader. I've always been curious about the supernatural, the paranormal, and psychic abilities, and I'm here to share my stories and interview folks who want to share their own stories with us. Let's get to it. Hey, Jennifer, thank you for joining us today. Hi, I'm excited to join you. So tell us where you're based and a little bit about your work as an artist and what your artistic medium is. So my name is Jennifer May Ryland. I'm a painter and tarot card designer. I'm based in Brooklyn, New York City. Great. And how long have you been working with the medium of of painting? I mean, I've always been a painter since I was since I can remember the my my earliest memories, some of my earliest memories are of drawing and painting. Uh, it's always been something that's kind of been at the center of my life. Uh, as far as being a professional painter, probably 10 years. And I read on your website that there are certain themes that play a role in your, both in your technique and your themes. And when I, when I first looked at your watercolor works in particular, I was seeing some homages to medieval aesthetic. And I read in your, on your website that that actually plays a, a pretty big role for you in addition to, in addition to religion, gender roles. So, so for you, what are, what are themes that really stand out for you as you prepare your work or as you, um, as you conceptualize what you're going to cover in your work? My work is really inspired by medieval art. It's a huge part of my inspiration. And I'm, I'm not sure what's drawn me so much to medieval art, but I've always been really drawn to it. Some of the elements of medieval art that really appeal to me are the narrative quality. I love how medieval art can contain a narrative that takes place over time within one two-dimensional image. So often we can see, and this is something I, I like to use in my art, we can see one character move across time and space within one image. And that's something I love about medieval art. Another aspect of medieval art that's really important to me is the seamless integration of comedy, tragedy, religious, sacred art, and the kind of most basic day-to-day life all captured in one image. And there's no separation between these ideas. I think that's really powerful and something I I bring to my art. And I saw... Also, I mean, I did a little bit of creeping because, I mean, it's my job, I guess, as an interviewer. But I saw that one of your inspirations is Bosch, the artist Bosch. And and I can, I totally see what you mean, how a lot of artwork of that time, it told a story. It told a narrative, like you said. And have you ever been to the, to the Met Cloisters Museum? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's one of my favorite places uh, in the world, definitely in New York City. Uh, and one thing I, I want to... The one of the most famous works of art in the the cloisters, as I'm sure you know, are the unicorn tapestries. And I've actually done a series of paintings integrating Princess Diana into the inter, uh, into the unicorn tapestries uh, and kind of placing her there. Well, one of the cards I was looking at your Diana tarot deck, and one of your cards has a unicorn in it. Could you actually? We're going to jump into your deck in a second, but I'll, because you mentioned the unicorn, that's something. That's one detail I noticed on this card that stood out to me. Um, I don't know if you remember which card it strength. was. Strength. It's strength. Yes, yeah. the strength <laughs> card, which yeah. is usually. Um, I mean, traditionally, there's in the in the Rider Waite Smith deck, it's a lion with a female, mm-hmm. and this one, it's a unicorn with with Diana, Princess of Wales. So, what was your what was your intention behind having the unicorn on the strength card? To me, the the traditional image of the strength card or the Rider Waite deck. Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly because usually what the strength card is is we're kind of seeing the this image of maybe masculine or aggressive strength represented by the lion contrasted with this sort of endurance and female power, the strength that that has. And I was interested in that sort of female coded strength, this power to persevere and endure. 
And that's what I wanted to represent with my strength card in the deck. So I chose the moment where Princess Diana got her divorce decree, finalized her divorce, because this was the moment she really, this was her choice. And she chose to bring an end to this marriage and step forward as an independent woman. And there's a lot of strength in that, of course. And I, throughout my deck, I really wanted to play and have fun with using the traditional images of tarot. So I thought about the the seal, the symbol of Great Britain. It contains a lion and a unicorn. So I imagined having her signing this divorce decree in front of actually a tapestry with this on it. So if you look closely on that card, you also see a lion as well. That is fascinating. And well, I want to ask you, what was your introduction to tarot in the first place? And then we'll definitely delve into like why Diana. Um, yeah, hardly even, I mean, you know, like most people, my introduction to tarot was as a young, very young person, as an early adolescent. I'm not from a tarot family. Um, my mom or no one in my family read tarot, but at a very early age, I, I saw people reading tarot and I was immediately drawn to it. Um, like a lot of people, I think my first, I was intimidated by tarot. I thought, oh, wow, you have to memorize all these different meanings. You have to really study it. So I I never, I felt, oh, no, I, I don't, I, I can't do that. That's not for me. <laughs> and it wasn't until um, maybe about four or five years ago that um, I I designed my first deck. And it was through the process of designing my first deck that I learned a lot about tarot and more about it. And what I and that's also when I realized really what what draws me to tarot is the same thing that draws me to medieval art. We're seeing a journey, we're seeing a narrative, we're seeing a story. And the cool thing about tarot is that it's two dimensional, right? So you're seeing this two dimensional story play out in time and space in two dimensions, but. It, unlike a a painting or a book, uh, it's the order is constantly changing, right? So what happens when all these relationships are constantly changing? Yeah, that makes, that makes total sense to me. And, and, and it's interesting how something so two dimensional is used for something so beyond (laughs) her physical dimensions Mm -hmm. for psychic Mm -hmm. abilities. Mm -hmm. And, and for you, um, what was your process? Because I I've seen that you you, you read tarot, you do readings mm-hmm. as well. And mm-hmm. what was your process for for learning how to do readings in the style that you prefer to do it? Mm-hmm. Um, so again, I I truly didn't. It was not something I really knew anything about at the time. I decided to to make my first deck. I just said, let's do it. Um, <laughs> so I I started with doing a lot of research before I did anything, and I read a lot about the different interpretations of tarot, the different meanings. And one thing that really helped me put it into framework was, first of all, just thinking of the journey of the major arcana, that this is the fool's journey. And seeing everything through that lens helped me have a bigger framework to understand it. And then just sort of studying the different um, suits, the, the wands, the swords, the cups, and the pentacles, and just kind of learning about them in general. And then from there, learning about the individual cards um, was definitely a learning process. I mean, when I, I, so I mostly read from my own decks, although I could read from other decks as well, because I have obviously a really a special relationship with them and I know them really intimately. And I really see, I mean, I do, I can do sort of like a, I'll typically do a Celtic cross spread or like a modified Celtic cross, or I'll do just a simple past, present, future spread. I like to keep it pretty simple. And I, I really see it to me. I don't, I don't really identify as a psychic. I identify as to me, what the tarot is for me is we're just looking at it together. We're creating this story together and there's, there's different stories, right? There's the story that's inherent in the cards. Then there's the story that I, as the the reader who has some sort of knowledge or intuition about you, there's the story that I'm going to see there as it relates to you. And then there's the story that that you see for yourself in those cards and how they, they inter- interact with your life. And those three stories together, to me, that's what makes a tarot reading. That's a really wonderful way to look at it. I never heard someone describe it that way. So thanks. And 
And so I, I remember I came across the Diana Taro on Instagram. I think we had followed each other and I thought this is so fascinating. And I there is such a widespread love for Diana Princess of Wales. There always has been and there will continue to be. So I wanted to ask you, for you, what was it about about um about her that drew you to want to do a tarot card deck as an homage to her? Well, you know, I mean, we all we all have feelings about Princess Diana, right? And I'm a I'm a millennial, so another really early early memory. I remember being in the grocery store checkout line with my mom and seeing all the you know wall to wall Princess Diana face headlines, you know, uh, Princess Diana crying or Princess Diana smiling or Princess Diana holding a baby, uh, and so I just from a really early age I I felt really fascinated by her. And also I've, I've learned as I've, I've done more work with the Diana Tarot, a lot of people have feel some sort of connection with princess Diana. And specifically a lot of people feel some sort of connection with princess Diana and their mom, which is something that I feel too. I think there's something about princess Diana that for a lot of people, she is this kind of almost mystical mother icon and a lot of people will associate her with their own mother and their own feelings about their mother. Very interesting. I, I've always heard also uh, people consider her, like they put her in a, a station of sainthood, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm very close to, proclaiming her a saint. Um, and I would like to ask you this. I don't know how annoying this question may be, <laughs> but was there, was there an influence in when we created this deck for you from pop cultural references like the crown but the movie spencer both of which have featured diana as a character in recent the recent since the pandemic started i think in the recent two three years yeah so yeah where do i begin with that uh so so it's a lot there uh just first of all to touch on the saint thing because i totally agree that's i that's really how i see her too um i think so I'm Catholic and I'm really interested in iconography. Obviously, it's a huge part of my art. Um, and the, one thing that's interesting about Catholic saints is they all have their icon, right? So the idea being that people who, you know, they have, these images were made often at a time when most people were illiterate. So they were designed such that anyone could look at the image and identify who the saint was and see their story through a simple icon. So St. Catherine has a wheel. Um, and there's, you know, uh, John the Baptist has a, a lamb, et cetera. And Princess Diana has that I iconographic status, I think, that we just see her and we associate her. With, we just see an image of her and we, everything, we know what, like she, and then the other thing about, about kind of Diana as saint is she's this martyr, right? Somehow that she was this beautiful young woman who went through all the suffering, but she was a princess. And then she tragically died violently at a young age and just all of that together. It's such a, it's almost, it has this kind of religious quality to it, to her story. So yeah, I could not agree more. Then as far as the pop culture stuff, you know, people do ask me that. I don't think it's annoying. I just think it's, it's definitely, I think, Every generation is always making stuff about Diana. It's crazy. You know, it's 2023 and half the time, if you actually see physical tabloids, which you don't that much anymore, but if you physically see a magazine, it seems like like one of those old kind of tabloid celeb celebrity magazines. Half the time, Princess Diana is on the cover in 2023. It's yeah. crazy. She's just so present still. And whether it's more like highbrow, um, highly produced films or tv or tabloids i just think there's something about her people are not over it yet i also grew up catholic i resonate a lot of iconography although i'm not an artist or i haven't studied art in our history very much um I also have this fascination of iconography myself, so I fully understand what you mean. And then um, with pop culture interest, um, I mean, I, I love watching The Crown, and it's because of The Crown that I bought Andrew Morden's book to read, oh, which yes. I, I saw Classic. that you featured in one of your cards, too. Um, and yeah, I'm about to read it soon. And what I want to ask you about, is, I want to ask you about a specific card, um, the full card. I saw that the full card, it involves her wedding day so why did you decide to start the deck 
with with her wedding day in particular? Yeah. So again, this is sort of the relationship with all of the cards in the deck between the traditional imagery, my own uh, interpretation, and also working with uh, really iconic images of Diana that we that we have that we all have in our heads. Um, and the fool, you know, what is the fool? The fool is the most important. It's the primary card in the tarot. It's the zero. The whole major arcana is the fool's journey. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, it's when I, when I, I designed the deck in order. So it was the first one I drew. And of course that one's so important. You really want to be deliberate about, about choosing the image for that card. And when I think of the fool, you know, in the Rider weight deck, it, the fool's stepping off a cliff, right? Uh, and, but very happily, you know, kind of just oblivious. And that's, I couldn't, I mean, what else could we say about Diana's marriage that she was sort of obliviously stepping off a cliff? She was entering this insane world of royalty, international celebrity. She had no idea. She was a teenager. Um, And everything else that happened at the same time, you know, she became this basically historical, world historical figure who made all these positive changes um, and drew attention to a lot of important issues. So it's like, I think most of us are, it's good that she chose to marry Charles, but who knows if she had it to do again, would she have done it? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And apart from the traditional imagery of, of the Rider Waite's Smith Terrell deck and that inf- how it influenced this deck, is there a part a part of her life story that has particularly resonated the most with you or really stuck with you as you worked on this deck? Good question. I mean, when I, so when I first, I, the first book I read about Diana was the Andrew Morton book too. So I read that when I was uh, about 20 and I was living in a foreign country um, with my boyfriend at the time who I, who became my, my husband I didn't know anyone. I didn't speak the language and I uh, was very lonely. And I picked up the Andrew Morton book at, you know, the secondhand uh, English bookstore and in town. And uh, definitely like I was reading it and I was like, yeah, this is, she's just like me totally, <laughs> you know? And I feel like a lot of people have that reaction, you know, cause she's such a, you know, that book is super emotional. You know, she's like, oh, I'm so lonely. I'm so, she's like very emotionally volatile and just going through all this trauma and drama. And I, at the at that moment, I was really uh, resonating with that. And, uh, you know, but now I don't know. I, I think over time, maybe I think uh, I've come to appreciate her more as a, as being a bit, uh, she was very media savvy. And she, by, by the time she'd been in the public eye for a few years, she really, knew how to create an image and and manipulate the media in the way that she wanted. And I, I, that's impressive. You know, she really, she became a master. So I, I think that's interesting the way she created her own image. Yeah. And I think you've taken that image that she created and also real life, the real, the really deep, real parts of her life story. And, and I have to say, what I'm about to say is you've created a wonderful deck. And what I want to say as well is, um, there are so many decks out there that are based on public figures, or there's even one on like Disney villains, which is really cute. Not my style, but I, <laughs> I, I mean, this is personal subjective opinion. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's not easy to take something um, in the pop culture and create something like a tarot deck that um, that I've come across that I would actually want to use for reading. And your deck is something that I can't wait to use for reading. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's my personal opinion. I'm not speaking on behalf of all tarot people, but, but um, it's just you created a deck that it it truly is an homage to her. It doesn't feel like it could have been so different had it been in, in different hands. So I think it's a really beautiful homage. And and how how do you want folks to to step away from using your deck or, or observing it, taking a look at it? What are feelings or thoughts you want them to step away with? I mean. Another word that I that I use a lot when I do tarot readings and that I think of a lot in relation to tarot, tarot is archetype. And so every tarot card is basically an archetype, whether it's, um, I don't know, the star or the empress or the king of pentacles. 
these are all people we could recognize in our life or people we we can be in different moments, right? And so when I'm reading tarot, I like to think of that. Okay, how is this figure expressing itself in your life right now? Is that you? Is that someone else in your life that's being the whatever, you know, the the page of wands, the the queen of pentacles? Who is this for you right now? And the thing about Diana is she she contained so much. She contained multitudes. So with a tarot deck, I wanted to show people all these different sides of her and let people kind of make up their own mind and uh, just uh, maybe relate to the various sides of her and the different personas she embodied during her life. And there's one, actually, I was just looking looking at the deck and there's one card that I think it's the Prince of Swords that fe- it's it's her receiving a reading from somebody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do we know if she ever? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I, think, I think I remember hearing about that, that she consulted with psychics herself. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, like, I think the Page of Swords is traditionally associated with this sort of thing, like spiritual guidance, learning, um, reaching out for answers from the universe and that sort of thing. And Diana was really into that stuff. She was she was into all kinds of uh, spiritual healing and spiritual practices, more so towards the end of her life. And I'm not, I actually don't know specifically about tarot, but I know she was really into spirituality and meeting with different kinds of healing people. And yeah, you'll, you'll actually, I, now I want to recommend you, once you read, read Andrew Morton, that's number one. But you have to remember when you read that book, she wrote that book with him and she definitely had an agenda, which is cool, you know, but it's her. It's really badass. You have to, but you have to read it through that lens that, okay, this is the story she wants people to hear. The next book I would say you should read is the Diana Chronicles by Tina Brown, because that gives more of a critical view. It's not, it's not anti-Diana by any means, but it's much more realistic and shows both the positive and negative sides of her and a little bit behind the persona she wanted to present. Got it. Okay. I'm looking at the book cover I searched up as well. And I remember seeing this book in bookstores and actually maybe on tabloids too, (laughs) featured on tabloids. So um, adding another book to my list of like 10 books I can't wait to read. (laughs) Um, Now I wanted to ask you as as a last question, um, let's say someone is wants to start their own tarot deck. What is the best advice you feel you could give to them? Um, hmm, I mean, so you asked me some questions about, or you, you made some comments about the deck and thank you that you you felt that it was really, um, I think, I guess in depth, going in depth on Diana, right? And uh, I would say that first of all, to someone who's interested in designing a tarot deck, you know, way before you even do anything, you should definitely really think about a topic that that's just like sets you on fire. You know, you're going to be spending a lot of time with the, that tarot decks take a long time to draw and, or to however you're going to create them. They take a long time to create. There's a lot there. Um, and then hopefully you'll be spending a lot of time with the deck once it's, once it exists and doing readings, et cetera. So yeah, I would only do a deck about something that absolutely drives you crazy that you want to talk about all the time <laughs> and learn a million things about. So that's number one. Number two, I mean, you know, I think just, just go for it. I, my personal method is I, I did sort of organization and writing. So I, I did my own research about the interpretation of each card. And then I kind of meditated on that on each one and thought, okay, now that I I feel really like I know all this uh, stuff about Diana's life, what moment does that bring to mind to me? And so I kind of did all of that thinking first before I started doing any visual work. And that helped to sort of separate those two tasks. Yeah, it sounds like a very, the best way to go about it. Like do your research and let it inform the work itself for sure. Now, how can our listeners find out more about you? Um, Well, again, my name is Jennifer May Ryland. Uh, Jennifer, J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R, May, like the month, M-A-Y. And Ryland, R E I L A N D. They can find the Diana Tarot Instagram. It's just the Diana Tarot, no spaces on Instagram. And you can find my work under my name, Jennifer May Ryland. I have an Instagram, I have a website, I have everything. You just Google me. So, yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. 
Thank you. It was really nice to talk to you. If you have a question or topic you want me to cover on Third Eyesight, head to my website, juanfranciscospirit.com slash contact and send a message my way. If you really enjoyed this episode, leave a review wherever you listen. I'd really appreciate it.